Welcome to Star Trek Online. My name is Bull, and I am going to be doing a Where I Play Star Trek Online for RPGNet, and for anybody else who happens to want to watch this. Uh, the purpose of this video is just to kind of show a little bit of how the game plays, uh, and take you through step by step on some of the early stuff, just to, you know, show it off and say, hey, this is the game, this is what we're playing. Um, to start with, we're going to make a new Federation character. Uh, the reason for that is that if you're starting the game for the first time, Klingon characters are actually locked um, until you hit level 25 with a Federation character. Once you hit level 25, then you can make a new Klingon character, and they start at level 20. Um, so we're going to start with Federation character. There are three classes. There are Tactical, Science, and Engineering. Uh, tactical characters are pretty much straight up your DPS focused characters. Uh, their special abilities tend to be things that add damage buffs. Uh, engineering officers, on the other hand, tend to be tougher. Uh, their special abilities tend to focus on healing and increasing uh, your hull and shields. Science officers are controllers, for lack of a better term. Uh, they tend to get a lot of uh, a lot of buffs, a lot of debuffs, uh, and they do some funky stuff. Uh, the one interesting thing about Star Trek is that by no means are you locked down to class. Uh, if you want to play a tactical officer who flies around in a science ship, you're more than able to do that. Uh, the other thing is that you will get bridge officers, and those bridge officers have special abilities of their own. So depending on what what bridge officers and what special abilities you give those bridge officers. You know, you can play a tactical officer who's very heal who does a lot of healing. You can play a engineer who is heavy on DPS. You know, you can play a science officer tank. Um, it's all in how you as it's all in how you sign your abilities and it's all in how you want to play. So, for purposes of this video, I am going to go ahead and start up an engineering officer. Uh, engineers are nice, they're tough. Uh, besides their innate healing abilities, um, they also have the ability to create turrets. Uh, there's, you can see the, the little uh, Tellarite with a gun turret there. Um, they also create heal, uh, healing turrets and uh, shield generating turrets. Uh, so they're kind of fun. They do all kinds of crazy stuff. So we are going to start it off, and let's see. Oh, what haven't I played yet? Uh, there's a lot of interesting options. Uh, for as you can see, there's a number of species available for uh, Federation to start with. Uh, I'm going to play male because, well, I just will. That's just me. Um, but you can play male or female from pretty much everything. Uh, I think a couple of the species on Fed side, or on, uh, I'm sorry, on Klingon side, do not have a uh, female version. Gorn specifically do not. Uh, beyond that, I'm not really sure. Uh, you can also play an alien. Aliens are interesting because they allow you to create your own ra alien race. Um, when you start off, there's a, you get traits. So like, We'll show you here. Like Andorian. Andorian has, some of the races have required traits. These are traits you cannot change. And then you have a pool of traits that you can uh, choose from. Um, aliens have a wider a range, a wider array of traits they can choose from. Although there's some that are specific to races only. And there's nothing that they have to take because, well, there are all kinds of crazy aliens that do a lot of different stuff. So, we're just going to take the default, although, as you can see, there's a lot of traits you can choose from. Uh, some of them are ground traits. You can see here, the ground traits only affect you when you're, uh, well, on the ground doing an away mission. And some of them are space traits, and those only affect you when you're in space. Um, actually, we are going to change a couple around here. Uh, efficient captain is just a wonderful skill to be able to have. 
because uh, that increases all your power levels, which is important later on. Uh, stubborn. Eh. Techie, techie I like. That's a, that's a hull repair. Uh, warp Theorist is good, because that's got some... The Warp Core Potential is a good one to have bumped up. And we'll take Accurate. Add to my accuracy. All right. So, as you can see here... There's, it's not really updating these, is it? Here we go. We'll just randomize. Uh, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with aliens. Um, just some, just some wacky ass designs. Um, they still tend to remain retain the uh, general uh, humanoid form, of course, but. And I thought I was playing male, so let's do that. There we go. Oh, and reset these. There we go. So we're just going to randomize a bit and go there. Why not? And you can change up your sizes and stuff. Well, oh, yeah, it can be really little, really big, somewhere in between. You can also do an advanced where you can really change up your your you know long, really long legs. And where's my torso? Torso length. <laughs> there you go. Make them really funky looking. You got different stances. So we'll go twitchy kind of. Yeah, they're always looking around a lot. So make this guy twitchy. He's, he's a little weirded out. Oh, and let's make him a little thinner. There we go. Longer fingers. There we go. Now he's really creepy looking. All right. Uh, you can customize your outfit. Uh, there's a lot of different options, and there's some stuff you can unlock as you play the game. Uh, I have a few of them unlocked here. Nothing too fancy, but we will for now. We'll just stick with the starting outfit, and you can change the colors. It'll default to your. Um, Class colors, yellow for engineering, red for uh, command, and blue for science. Uh, despite the uh, the red shirt mythology, because red shirts were security in the first series, the, the, the original series, they changed it up later on so that red became command. So you tended to be gold shirts that would die because they were security in later, uh, later shows. But the red shirt has lived on despite that. And we need a name. And we will call this guy Roger. Now, one thing I like is that names are not unique in this, to a degree. I can have a character named Roger, and 32 other players can have a name Roger. Because when you're connecting to another player, what you actually use is their login handle, which is unique. And in my case, it's at Bulldrek. So, I'll show you on the screen here. And I'll show you in-game. Oh, you can't show it on there. Never mind. Uh, so in-game, if somebody was to send me a tell, it would be Roger at Bulldrek, not just Roger. And you can pick your ship name. And it'll be the USS Triton, because why not? You can, you can put in a uh, first, last name. You can put in a biography. Stuff goes here. Yay. And that's it. And that will get us into game. Okay, welcome to part two. Now, now that we've made our character, it's time to enter the game for the first time. Now, since I've played the uh, since I've played a character before, I have the option of um, skipping the tutorial or playing the tutorial out. 
Uh, since we're doing a Where I Play, I'm going to go ahead and play the tutorial. So, no, I will play from here. And we get a cutscene. Oh, showing a graduation ceremony or something, some Vulcans. Uh, there's a Vulcan ship, a Dakir. They're kind of neat. Uh, Vulcans and Romulans glaring at each other on Vulcan. And Romulans. Oh, and the purple guys are the Tal Shiar, specifically. They're fun. Uh, things blowing up. Ah, that'd be new. That'd be Romulus blowing up. I believe there's supposed to be a voiceover, and I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it because I tend to play with my sound pretty pretty low, because I usually play with uh, chat on. Uh, I will turn the sound up once this is uh, once we're done with this cutscene, so that uh, hopefully you guys can hear some of it when I'm not talking. Klingons. Things blowing up, because it's Klingons, things always blow up. Ah, uh, jean Pac, leader of the Klingons, he's a bastard. Ooh. We'll just watch the pretty graphics. Oh, and there's things blowing up over here. No, don't blow up. Oh, the Dominion, the Founders, and of course the Borg. Dun dun dun. The Borg used to be such badasses, and then Voyager kind of ruined them. And there's your introduction to Star Trek Online. And we'll get fun little tutorial messages that I'm largely going to ignore because they're annoying. And hey, look, there I am. La. <laughs> I really look a little funky jumping since I'm so tall and lanky. Alright, so let's... Uh, I'm going to pause. Okay, the in-game volume has been turned up. I don't know if that will actually affect anything for those watching, but... Uh, yeah, what the heck? Alright, so in this tutorial, uh, we get a look at the warp core for the ship we are currently on. Uh, which I believe will be the USS Triton, since that was the name I gave to the starting ship I was on. Uh, we have some engineering officers hanging out down here. And the little eye tells you, hey, this guy has something to tell you. And quite often, that will be the guy you need to talk to. And if you look on your mini-map, you can zoom in and out on your mini-map with the mouse wheel scroll. Um, there'll be a yellow circle around your target for whatever current your mission, your current mission is. So we need to report to the chief engineering officer. And sure enough, this is the chief engineering officer. Oh no, the Borger attacking, are attacking and Captain Taggart needs all hands to battle stations. I need you to get to the bridge and help me coordinate our efforts with the captain. Alright, why don't we do that since... I'm a lowly ensign, and I need to listen to our chief engineering officer. He's also level 40, so... So leave engineering. I have now left engineering. Attention, this is the captain speaking. All hands to battle stations. Repeat, all hands to battle stations. M brings up the map. And again, your mouse wheel scrolls in and out. And you can also kind of move it around if you hold down the button and move it. So we are looking for this yellow circle. We're going there, which is at the end of the hall, coincidentally enough. And, you know, we can explore a little bit, too. There's stuff. Oh, look. There's all this cool stuff. Uh, if you start as a tactical officer, you'll start in this room. And if you start as a science officer and do the tutorial, I believe you'll start over here in sickbay. Yep, science and sends report to me. And since I was an engineer, I started in engineering.
takes the turbo lift to the bridge. And here is the bridge. The bridges are very large on these ships. Like, way larger than they need to be. Uh, from what I read, that was largely due to the fact that it's at one point it was planned that there would be a lot more bridge actions going on, where like you'd have to fight off people trying to board your ship and whatnot. And unfortunately, that sort of thing never happened much. Although, the Foundry, which is the player-created missions and stuff, can use the bridges, and some of them do. So I guess it's good that they're this spacious, because you, know, you don't want the room to move, or to move around while you're fighting and such. But in general, they just kind of make these uh, ships look cavernous. So let's go talk to Captain Taggart and see what he has to say. Ensign Roger, you're just in time. The Borg are attacking Vega Colony. Our orders are to join the fleet that was fighting the Borg, but we may be too late. Because it's the Borg, and the Borg are badass. The USS Kittimer is supposed to be coordinating the defense. Hail them. We need to know what's going on. Use one of the consoles to hail the USS Kittimer. Why he called me down specifically to hail them when he's got a whole bunch of people sitting here on the bridge, I will never know. But it's a tutorial, so you got to learn to do, interact with stuff. So... Uh, you can hit the F button, which is really handy, um, to to use whatever the pop-up on your screen is. This pop-up says, Hail the USS Kittimer. And, of course, there's a glowing console and an arrow. Uh, you don't usually get the arrow in-game. Uh, usually the stuff just glows when you need to use it. So I will use it. Ensign Roger did it, sir. We're getting a response from Kittimer. Signal is not coming from the Kittimer's bridge. Communication is from an emergency medical hologram. Thank you again, Voyager. This is the emergency medical hologram aboard the USS Kittimer. I am requesting assistance from any Federation vessel in range. The Kittimer is being overwhelmed by Borg boarding parties. These Borg are different than the ones in my history records. They seem disconnected somehow. They're strange, but still quite dangerous. Ah, so he actually has some voice, which is kind of cool. Uh, don't know why the captain and them don't have any. I've lost contact with the bridge, and main engineering is under assault. I am unable to contact Commander Davis for new instructions. I don't know how much longer we can hold the ship. We must send help immediately. We cannot allow the board to take the committer. We will... Kittimer. We will move to Defender until more help arrives. Ensign Roger, I have a job for you. Think you're ready for a mission? Uh, well, if I say no, the tutorial ends and I get booted from the game. Eh, no. No is not even an option. So I think we will. I need you to beam over to the Kittimer and assess the situation. Find the officer in charge and help the crew if you can. Good luck, Ensign. I am counting on you. Alright, we need to return to the turbo lift. And this is where I'll pause, and we will head over to part three. Welcome back to part three. I'm Bull, and I'm your host. And we have just beamed, we've just headed down the turbo lift to the transporter room. So that we can head over to the USS Kittimer and save it from the nasty Borg. So we come over here, and we talk to the transporter chief. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is that... The transporter chief, and you'll some of the other characters you'll notice have these like straps on them, uh, <laughs> the shoulder and thigh straps that make them look like a uh, bad uh, Rob Liefeld '90s comic character. Uh, those are the kits, and we'll get into more in kits in a little bit. Uh, but in case somebody was wondering why they have all these cool attachments and I don't, that's why. Uh, so we talk to the transporter chief, and they want to send us over to the uh, USS Kittimer. So uh, they're beaming us to the medical base so that we can talk to the emergency medical hologram and find out what's going on. And we head over to the transporter pad. And let's beam up. And you get this cool beam up. <laughs> because my arms are so long, the animation's a little, a little wonky. Usually he touches his uh, comm badge. So we get a loading screen, and we get a cutscene. Look at all these Borg all over the place, and people fighting the Borg. 
and it's just all kinds of fun. And here we are in sick bay. Let's talk to the emergency medical hologram and see what he has to say. I am an Help at last. And that's a nice little throwback to uh, McCoy. I'm a doctor, not a whatever. I need your help, Edson. Much of the Kittimer's crew was injured in the initial board assault. None of the crew insisting me had medical training. Maybe you will be more useful. I assume you passed basic medical training at the Academy. How do none of them have basic medical training and I do? That's what I want to know. Now, the fun thing is, is, and I know, I'm a PC, so that's why I have training and the, uh, the medical crewman doesn't have medical training. That's what I want to know. But, you know, I'm the PC, so that means I get to be really cool and badass. So you run over and head up next to somebody and you scan the injured crewman. So you pull out your tricorder and zip, 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 zip. Alright, now that I've scanned one... You head back over and talk to the EMH again. Yes, because you can run over and press a button. No, probably not. Blah blah blah. I believe I can spare a few bits of processing power for you. There is an eighty-eight point four seven percent chance that you will need my help. All right. Now we need to go over to here. Oh look, there's Borg trying to bust in. Well, let us talk to this guy and see what he wants. Uh, he needs to fix the computers and deal with the Borg. If I'll help, he can get them off the ship for good. Ah, so we're going to go put the Borg into the transporter buffer. And here's a transporter console, apparently. So, now well, we got a couple of them, anyways. Alright, and then we are going to head through these doors here. There's another console, so we're going to use this console to beam the Borg over there where the hull breach is. And watch them get sucked away. Oh. Alright, yay, he's happy. So now we have Commander Davies wants us to head up to the bridge and get the ship operational. Think I can handle it? Well, do I have a choice? No. And it's actually a starter zone, so there's actually other players doing the same thing you are. Which makes you feel a little less special, I suppose, but that's the nature of an MMO. You and 42,000 other people get to save the planet and the world and the spaceships and whatever else. Nah. They're giving you a heads up so that you can use uh, basically FPS mode if you want it. Or it's not really FPS mode. But you can go to this mode and you can just kind of fire wherever the reticle's at. Uh, you do extra damage using this mode, but I honestly don't like it that much. Um, it's really a little hard to use. Um so I don't use it. Uh, you can press B to toggle in and out of that mode. Uh, normal mode, and we'll show you normal mode fighting, because now we have to destroy three of these Borg devices, which are the big green glowing things over here. So you target one of those, you click on it, and you target it. Um, and if you click enough times, it'll blow up. And you'll fire automatically. And you get a Borg drone. You can see their uh, little status display there. 
And your action bars at the bottom. I mean, it's an MMO. Most people know how this works. And hey, there's a Borg floating by. I wonder if that's the one I beamed out into space earlier. <laughs> so. Blow up a couple of more Borg devices. Uh, most weapons have two uh, attack modes. You get a uh, your basic basic attack, which is usually quicker, um, but doesn't do as much damage. And then there's a secondary attack, which will either do more damage, um, or they have some sort of uh, secondary of effect that they can do. In this case, it has a chance to stun, and it'll slow things down a little bit. Um, other ones will fire a big cone effect, or just a big rapid fire burst, or a sniper shot, or whatever. There's a whole bunch of different weapons in the game. So the various weapons do different things. So we're going to keep moving here, and we need to head to this turbo lift to go to deck three. Alright. So they want us to go to main engineering. Oh, um, and, you know, if you read the pop-ups, you learn this stuff. Moving forward, you normally, this is your normal movement. Uh, if you hold down shift, you will run. You kind of have a, a sprint mode. Uh, when you're in combat, you have a meter. You can only sprint for so long. Uh, but when you're in combat, uh, sprinting does give you uh, a little bit of a defense bonus. So you take less damage, which is nice. Uh, when you're out of combat, and you can tell if you're in combat or not by the red alert uh, condition red that'll be up top uh, on your screen there. And that takes a few seconds to fade after combat ends. So you're kind of stuck in it for a little while. So you can see there's a little fatigue meter showing up there at the bottom of my screen. And once it's done, I stop running. Or stop sprinting. Alright, we are heading down into engineering, and... And I'm going to go ahead and pause so that we can head over to part four.